We are live, Elise. Welcome to the brand new Unmasked podcast. This, you're one of the first guests, and I'm so honoured to have this conversation with you as a dear friend of mine, but also like an incredibly inspiring woman. And I can't think of anyone better to to be on Unmasked. Like you're kind of one of the people who has inspired this for me, really. So welcome. Thank you for joining me. And we were just saying before we hit record, it's been three years since we've actually seen each other in person. So excited. I think like, the name of your podcast is so perfect. Yay. Thank you. I know, right? It's a cheeky wink to everything that's going on at the moment. I was like, it has to be done. We've got to get like real conversations, more real conversations, because there are a lot of people speaking very truthfully and openly and honestly, despite all the craziness going on in the world. Um, so it's been three years since you and I were in person together and the world was a completely different place wasn't it I think we were hanging out by a pool in Mallorca at a gorgeous yes. five-star hotel <laughs> having like the time of our lives <laughs> you know really focused on growing our businesses and and creating our lives and who knew three years later what a different story that we're living both individually and, and collectively now in the world as well mm -hmm. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your story what what's going on in your world right now and I know that you have been on an incredible journey in your life generally from school teacher to millionaire mm -hmm. entrepreneur and also in recent years you've had some very personal challenges would you mind telling us a little bit about kind of your story sure so um I've always been an outside of the box thinker and visionary and you know right right out of college I found myself backpacking through Asia and climbing the highest mountains on the continent. And I did that for three years. And that was, I think, very pivotal in my belief system that I've developed today because it gave me a perspective on how other people live. And I volunteered in girls' schools and taught English and it was just an incredible time to tap into the heartbeat of humanity and to develop a sense of, of empathy for others. And, you know, it, I feel like here in the U.S., it is often all about me, me, me. And we don't really have a, um, a collective mindset in terms of how does my actions in influence the environment or other people in my community. And so that was a time for me to develop that perspective in life. And also it was a time for me to develop this entrepreneurial spirit because I came home and started my first business called the um, Saturday Night World Kitchen. And we would uh, feature different countries. And this was back just after 9-11 happened. And that 9-11 event was honestly the first um, world event that I, I looked at and thought something doesn't make sense here. Mm. Because I, when you watch the footage and you spoke or you got to listen to the eyewitnesses of what happened, it didn't line up with what the media was telling us. And mm. it, it, it started me down the path of becoming what the CIA termed conspiracy theorist. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and so this is, this is how you and I have connected really again exactly. recently, isn't it? It's like we've kind of banded together with that label a little bit for, for sharing different points of view. And so that was your, your first kind of venture down the rabbit hole. Yep, <laughs> yep, 100%. And it was interesting because I would bring it up to other people and even my uh, new husband at the time we're still married today 20 years later but um he was very skeptical of what i was questioning because mm. he just believed that the media was telling the truth and mm. so i've always been skeptical of what they tell us like you know when we had our children we did home birth because i didn't believe that what they were doing in hospital with birth was healthy for mother and child Mm -hmm. And I didn't believe that the interventions they did that led to such high rates of C-section and then vaccination and the whole nine yards was healthy for mother and child. And mm -hmm. so we did home birth. And that was one of the first, I guess, <laughs> ways that I broke away from the mainstream 
Yeah, some people call it the matrix. <laughs> and I decided that, um, you know, I was going to continue to develop this new perspective that was outside of mainstream. And I went down um, where health and wellness and you know it's interesting because here in the US and I don't know about this for you but people in general just accept what's told to them by the quote expert yeah and they don't even look into who the expert is like who is paying for this person to give you this perspective and what test did they run right yeah. it's, it's so fascinating to me how people just kind of go along with the status quo and it is hard though because you get a lot of pressure and people call you crazy and you know whatever but yeah. um i've found that the more i speak out the larger uh following i have built because mm -hmm. it resonates you know people um propaganda does not resonate with people and truth mm -hmm. eventually comes out and then it starts to make sense to others yeah. but it, it took some time because we're very indoctrinated here. Totally. So let's go back a step to, to your first kind of venture into, you know, how, I guess what you have just explained is you looking at taking control of your health, right? Initially, yeah. that's what, you know, you, you started questioning things and how things were being done yep. in the mainstream and in, you know, within healthcare and things like that. How, where did you start with taking control of your own health? How did that journey begin for you? Well, um, I would say even in college, I was a volunteer at our local food co-op and that was a, a little grocery store that, you know, had bulk items, it had organic, it had your amino acids and all of the things that people thought were like, what is in the world, right? And yeah. I did that for many years and I learned a lot about natural wellness and how, to, how food can be healing. And, you know, sometimes we're missing certain uh, nutrients and that can lead to issues. So really that was the first, my first um, walk down that trail. And then I started to make my own body care products and I made everything from scratch. We got rid of all the chemicals in our home. And this was over over 20 years ago. So literally wow. right out of college. And then same with our kids. We did, um, when I was pregnant, I was making all of my own, you know, I would make my raspberry and nettle leaf tea and drink that every day mm. because of the nutrients for pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. It was just everything from scratch. And then we cloth diapered our babies and, you know, I breastfed both boys till they were two and a half years old each. Yeah. <laughs> it would hate for me to say that now because they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you're so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but I feel like all those decisions were pivotal in my belief system today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the perspective that I've developed on what's happening in the world today. And mm -hmm. also it ties into the business that I've built because I was right. originally a teacher and employee in a, um, at a school district uh, right out of the gates. I did not want to join their teachers union because I felt like it was uh, coerced upon the staff members. And then if you didn't join, you would be ostracized. And I, they just did really weird things to the people that would not join their teachers union. And now, mm -hmm. interestingly, I look at what's happening in LA and in our school systems here in the United States. And, you know, there's this huge fight right now about kids going back to school and it's the teachers mm -hmm. unions leading the way. Yeah. But the interesting thing is their demands, and this was just reported on the news the other day out of LA, the mm -hmm. teachers union in LA, their demands were exactly what the far are left in the in the BLM is demanding, such as defund the police and defund charter schools and like all of these things that really don't have a, the best interest of kids in mind. Mm. So mm. at any rate, I feel like it, there's just so many things that we take for granted here that once you decide to break away and you take control of understanding the human body and our biology, health and wellness, uh, you leave the status quo of, of being an employee and become an entrepreneur. Mm. You take control of your kids' health and, you know, the directing that and really researching vaccinations and, you know, just the things that people just do because everyone's doing it. You're going to find... Well, well once, once you kind of go down that rabbit hole, you, there's no going back, right? What, you see how one thing leads to the other and everything's so <laughs> intertwined and, you know, it really is a matrix. Um, and, 
hearing you tell your story in that way that I haven't heard before, like, you know, how your curiosity and your personal investment in doing things your own way and taking full control of your own health and your children's health, it's no, no surprise to me that, you know, you've got an incredibly successful business and career that you've built from the ground up. And it has really come from personal passion and a, and a quest for, for your individual and your family's uh, well-being, first and foremost and then your passion has kind of had those huge ripple effects out into your community and the world so you know as a as a business coach myself this is what I'm talking to people about all the time it's like you find that thing that my my company's called soul fire sessions right you find that thing that ignites your soul fire you go out there and you you yeah. pursue the things that light you up and that you're really passionate about you don't need to worry about the money the money follows the service from that passion and and you are such a great example of this and and that's what i loved about you from the beginning of, of our meeting it was that you really are someone who lives and leads by example you really are and, and you just you're so grounded in your beliefs and in so passionate but in a really unassuming way and you don't push anything onto anyone else like you just are so open to conversation and to, you're curious and, and you kind of have this magnetism that draws people into that. It's like, wow, you, you know, you're, you're so passionate about this. You're such a great example of this. I want, I want to know, what have you got? What are you on? And, and your energy as well, you know, yeah, well, is you. contagious. Well, and I need to speak to those um, that are going to be hearing this podcast later that are really extremely shy and self-conscious mm. because that is another part of my story that you may not know. Yeah. When I was growing up, I was so shy. And I would have my, si my sister speak for me when wow. we were at school, you know, on the playground, or if we were um, at a restaurant and she would order for me or something, you know, she would always speak for me because I was so shy and I hadn't found my voice. And even all the way through college, when I uh, failed, <laughs> public speaking. It's so interesting. People just can't believe that because now I've spoken to auditoriums of 25,000 people. And wow. it's, it's fascinating to know, I, I, I think for people to know that you can come from any place um, and get to a level of success that would blow your mind. That, yeah. um, it, that it literally is, I think for me, I developed that, like you were saying, the curiosity mm. and questioning like if you can ask ask yourself questions about why do I believe what I believe and why do I you know why do people say that this is safe or that is healthy or you know this there's so many things that we just literally take for granted mm. that, that I love that you start to that. question it <laughs> you can, I love that you've you said can that. start to yeah I'm sorry I was just gonna say, sorry to interrupt you but uh, I I'm like giddy excited because that was me too as a child I was painfully shy like if a teacher asked me to speak even the thought of a teacher asking me to speak or you know read something out in class would have me sweating and like terrified <laughs> and people people can't believe that about me today because you know I've been a, a, an actor on tv and in films and spoken on so many stages and stuff and I think that there a lot of very successful entrepreneurs actually you'll find that back in the day they were shy but I love that you say it was the questioning and the curiosity that kind of led you to be able to be so successful and so confident as a result. I had never thought of that for myself, but that rings true for me too. I was always asking why, and someone would give me an answer yeah. and I'd say, yes, but why? Yeah. You know, and you, yeah. you get to those, those deeper levels uh, to the point that my parents, I think, wanted to like disown me. They were like, stop asking us why, we don't know. <laughs> you know, and it is, it's for me, it was definitely that questioning and that curiosity. And now I think about it, if you, and I'm sure for you as well, thinking about all of your clients, all of your, you know, business friends, same thing. We are curious and we question. And that's what also yes. what gives us the courage to stand out from the crowd and say, do you know, no, I don't think that actually that no. doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it is courageous. Right. How did you find yeah. that courage for, you know, from that questioning and the curiosity, how did you get the courage uh -huh. to start speaking out? <laughs> well, <laughs> one of my story you may not know. <laughs> <laughs> it happened when I was nine, ages 19 to 21 and I was engaged to someone who was so abusive and it was like literally i felt myself just disappearing and mm. i was i was uh embarrassed about the abuse so i was hiding it 
And um, there was a friend that I made in one of my education classes for um, teaching, the, the teaching um, certification I was doing at university. And she was very spiritual and she really um, recognized that I was struggling with something, but she didn't know what. And so she had invited me to go with her to church. And so I went with her to church and we, uh, it was like the sermon was made for me. And I, was raised Catholic, but I hadn't really had a relationship with Jesus. And at that moment, I um, accepted Jesus as my savior. And I started to journal about what had been happening and like admitting it on paper and mm -hmm. um, asking for God to give me the strength to leave that relationship. And it was traumatic. Like I had to get restraining order. He would come for me at my classes. He choked me. He like tried to wow break into my house in the middle of the night, the police were called, like, it was horrific. Mm. But through that, through journaling, and through um, asking questions about what is this experience meant to teach me, I started to find this inner strength and, and power. And um, it, it gave me the strength to leave the relationship and to stand my ground and not get sucked back in like I had been doing over and over and over and over again, which is very common in abuse. And yeah. um, that I think led me to this ability to um, apply that to other challenging times and situations in my life as as I continue to grow as a woman and entrepreneur and spiritual leader and thought leader, I've been able to continue to question everything and mm -hmm. what do I believe and why do I believe it and why do others believe this and why do we accept this or that and then the other piece is a lot of I think a lot of leaders in these spaces where they're 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 trying to lead others to a new awareness can fall into a trap of shaming people blaming name calling mm -hmm. and that's not productive because that yeah. doesn't attract people to explore their belief system that instead repels them and they put up a wall. So yeah. a lot of times I get a lot of feedback about how I, how, um, how do I say it? Proficient I am in helping others to break through into new belief systems. And it really comes down to the fact that I've experienced like so many, um, you know, traumatic things in my own life. And I know others have as well. And we form our beliefs from those experiences and therefore just loving each other and accepting each other for where we're at and mm. leading with love, return to love, like always, um, just giving people the space to ask the question. And that's like, when we're talking about political stuff, people get really polarized and right. nasty really fast. What is it they say? Never talk about religion and politics <laughs> exactly if you're an entrepreneur don't do that right no. I, I still and i still do get that feedback because i've become very outspoken about the scamdemic <laughs> and yeah. the people are people are like you can't talk about that you're an entrepreneur you're supposed to talk about your business i'm like, like you know what if i'm not going to be talking about this it, who is and you know like if our freedom slowly chipped away and people like myself don't stand up and speak up. Where where is that going to take us? I don't want to mm. go there without trying. Mm. You know. I I thank you for sharing your story first of all because I know that you know, and this is part of my intention for Unmasked is that we have these conversations. You know, it's unmasked in every way. It's it, it you know, it's life, love, and leadership. And and so I know that you sharing that story, and I'm sure you've had this so many times as you've told your story it helps others find their own strength and give themselves permission to break away from painful, destructive, violent situations, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so many are experiencing this. And I think now more than ever, because everything <coughs> as it shifts in the world is shifting individually. We're seeing a lot of shadows being brought to the surface individually and collectively. And with that comes a lot of pain and confusion and, devastation, destruction, death even. Um, and this is what we're facing. So thank you so much for sharing that because th these are the, the conversations that are really important right now. And mm -hmm. I really admire the level at which that you are outspoken because that takes an enormous amount of courage. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come on to that in a minute and, and the scamdemic and, and everything. Has, <laughs> did that relationship, did you breaking away from that relationship and you going through that process Mm -hmm. help you to 
to be more courageous in other areas it sounds like it did like it you know and it's also your health journey recently as well so you've created mm -hmm. an incredibly successful business you're an incredible coach you're an incredible entrepreneur incredible leader and would you mind telling us a little bit about your journey over the last couple of years because the last time i saw you in mallorca at that point were you you healthy and fine and as far as i i, I know that we were all going through some challenges in life because we were in a, an intimate coaching container together so we know a little bit about all of our challenges but where were you health wise and kind of generally in your life when we were like in mallorca a few years ago where was your business where was your life um well my business was already a seven plus figure business um yeah. annually and um you know, you know, I was highly successful. I was leading private coaching retreats, also top leader in my network marketing company. And I had, I had noticed that I was feeling these, like I was having a lot, lot of right upper abdominal pain, a lot of it. And I remember in Mallorca, that was the trip where I had decided I am not going to drink wine anymore or any alcohol because yeah. even a half a glass of alcohol, I would have heart palpitations. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I would wake up feeling like I had a hangover. And mm -hmm. I, so therefore I knew something was going on in my body. I wasn't able to process alcohol. And that wasn't a lot of, I wasn't like a regular drinker either. Like I might yeah. have a glass of wine once a week. And then, you know, when we would all get together, I would have a, a glass of wine with dinner. Yeah. But that was one of the things, that was one of the times that I made that decision. And I haven't drank alcohol since. And also have, um, I realized over time that it was connected a lot to when I was traveling. And I've learned now a lot about environmental toxins. And, and also, to be transparent, I was not like I like probably so far I've portrayed myself as a granola hippie type mom. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I also love glam and luxury. And I thought after having breastfed my boys for a total of five years that I deserved a mommy makeover and I got breast implants um, in 2015. And I, I think that the implants paired with the environmental toxins that I was exposed to led to the chronic illness that I have today and mm -hmm. also triggered some genetic defects. So I've done uh, extensive genetic testing and I have the MTHFR double heterozygous defect, meaning I don't methylate the properly, so I don't get the, the B vitamins properly and I don't detox toxins properly. Also, I have a genetic defect called A. HLA-DR, and that one is how you process biotoxins. So mm -hmm. mold, parasites, Lyme and co-infections, um, candida or fungus, these all produce endotoxins, which are basically their by the byproduct of their metabolism, of those organisms' metabolisms, become poison to me because my body doesn't clear it out like the normal person. Like, mm -hmm. and for example, this all came, um, this came to our realization when we were remodeling our house and through the vibration of the hammering on the new siding, it broke away the wall in the basement of our guest bedroom where there had been a slow leak from the hot water baseboard heater above and it was mold. The entire wall was mold behind the sheetrock. There was no visible sign of it until they were doing this remodeling and that vibrating broke the wall. Wow. It was literally rotten. And yeah. here, here was the crazy part though. Um, so I'd noticed again, I, I was the most sick with the pain, the exhaustion, the headaches when I traveled. And I yeah. now have learned that we are exposed to incredibly high amounts of radiation when we fly. Yeah. And then when we stay in large hotels, we have HVAC systems, um, you know, their heating AC systems that are really large and they sh are shared room to room. So if you have mold growing in one room, that uh, large hotel HVAC, HVAC system will distribute it throughout the whole hotel, which makes sense now why I would be sick 
at, when I would go to large conventions, when I would go to retreats that were hosted in hotels, and yeah. then, um, you know, et cetera. Because when I'm at home, we live in the country and I'm not, we, we live in a very small rural area of Montana. And so I'm not in large buildings like that. They have these mega huge system, HVAC systems. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so the whole cascade led me to uh, the doc, my doctor here thinking I had a problem with my gallbladder. And so it was in March of 2019 that they took my gallbladder out. I had no stones or sludge. It was literally, it just literally quit functioning. It wouldn't open to release the bile. And the bile is wow. where we uh, bind toxins in our um, body um, to excrete them. But the problem is when you are excreting bile into your digestive tract, you also reabsorb 90% of it back. And so it gets recirculated through the liver and it concentrated again in the gallbladder and then excreted. And so what happens to someone who is being exposed to a lot of toxins and isn't clearing them is they are just concentrating more and more and more of the toxin into the liver and the gallbladder, which now mm -hmm. makes sense why my gallbladder wasn't functioning properly. Yeah. Um, also, we discovered that I have Lyme and co-infections. Um, I had a massive parasitic infestation that was systemic. I had um, the first time I took the deworming medicine. I had worms literally in my arms coming up to my skin and um, my legs. It was horrific. Wow. Horrific. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember, <laughs> I remember you because you shared a lot on, on social yeah. media and I, I can only imagine how, you know, because you were so open about it. And, you know, I think that was so helpful for other people to start because these are things we don't think about, right? We don't, we just I go know. through life and, and we write off, oh, I've got a bit of a pain in my stomach yeah. or I've, I'm having chronic mm -hmm. headaches. We just accept that as how we we're meant to feel. We, I think actually most of us have forgotten what it's like to feel fully well. Yes. You know, because our society's yes. not set up. Yeah, right. Our society isn't set up. Like you say, the, the hotels are just the tip of the iceberg. Like our entire world is not really set up for, for healthy living. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that. But it was horrifying. I can only imagine what you were going through actually experiencing that and having that oh, kind of horrible. parasite. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. Well, and that was just, um, you know, so when I, I went through the um, parasitic cleanse, that was. Well, the first time I realized I had an issue was in April of 2019. So it was like about two months after that gallbladder surgery, yeah. which by the way, if any of you have a right upper quadrant pain, look for the root cause. Don't go and get your gallbladder out because the problem is once you have it removed, it really messes up your digestion because now you don't yeah. have the bile you need to process the fats that you consume. And so anyway, that's another, a whole nother podcast to go down. But um, I'll just I think we might, you and I might be doing several of these. <laughs> right? I know. We have, we, well, we've got a series of unmasked. I know. Well, and I got to say that here in the US, they do 800,000 gallbladder removal surgeries a year. That's wow. a huge number. And it sounds like and that's a lot of money to do it. They're quick to do it from the sounds oh, of it. They're right? very quick to do it. They're very quick to do it. And um, granted, my surgeon did say, you know, I can't guarantee this will help you because, you know, you don't have any stones or sludge. But, mm. but um, oh, and I will also mention, they had to do a, um, a radiation, it's called the HIDA scan, and it, they inject you with this radiation called gallidinium. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it's a, um, a radioactive heavy metal. Mm. <laughs> Guess what? Now I have a toxic high amount of this radioactive heavy metal because my body doesn't excrete it. And here's the issue. Like oh there God. are certain people that have genetic, a genetic makeup that when they're exposed to heavy metals, to, to endotoxins from uh, biotoxins, like those pathogens I shared, and their bodies don't process them. They're the ones who have a vaccine reaction. They're the mm -hmm. ones who have a chronic illness like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, my migraines, these things that are like chronic and go on and on and on and on for years. Yeah. And the doctors just keep throwing a uh, prescription medication at them so they can manage the symptoms. They're not getting to the root cause because in Western medicine, they don't look for the root cause. They literally just treat the symptom. I, and they think people like myself are crazy and it's in their yeah. head. And they yeah. try to give you a mental diagnosis and then put you on an antidepressant or anti-anxiety. Yeah. Guess what? Having biotoxins in the body at a high level 
actually does create anxiety because it messes up your neurotransmitters. Right. Who knew? Yeah. Like that was the other well, thing I was going to tell you when I traveled, I would have really bad anxiety and it turns out it's related to these, uh, endotoxins, these biotoxins. And when I take a binder, if I feel anxiety, the anxiety goes away because it mops up the toxins. It literally affects huh. your brain. It's fascinating. Well, so you and I are going to have to talk so much. I don't know I if know, you know right? about how many people well, out I there. Massive, I had a massive <laughs> breakdown last year with like severe PTSD and um, right. a panic disorder, essentially. And I was told I was crazy. Yes. It was in my head. There's nothing wrong with you. I ended up in the, uh, the ER so many times with like yes. severe heart palpitations. Uh, I was like, there's something. The anxiety is like, <laughs> it's the symptom. There's something else going on. We still never got to the end of it, but this yes. year I'm feeling better. But I still want to get to yes. like what was causing that in the first place. I know a little bit I, about that. That's for another. That's for another yeah, conversation yeah. again. But at the time, you know, they're, they're so quick to go have these antidepressants, yes. have these anti-anxiety pills, and I'm like, but this is a symptom of something. You're not and and it's, because it's they can't see it, they're like, it's in your head. There's nothing wrong with you. And I was like, I'm telling you, my body is yeah. not right. There's something wrong with me. I know, you know, it drives me nuts. So I, anyway, <laughs> I have to, I have to share with you too, that my husband, um, he is an orthopedic physician assistant, you know, trained in the Western medicine model. And through this process, I would love to say, Oh, he was my biggest supporter. No, he wasn't. And I, and we can fully say this. We both admitted it publicly. He did not believe me. He thought it was in my head because in Western medicine, that's what they teach. It's so sad. And you think yeah. of the millions of people who are not being served as yeah. a result. And, and um, it's just so sad. I can tell you though, he has had 180 transformation and has now created an online practice where he works with people like myself who have these really weird, um, you know, symptoms that they present that they can't figure it out at the doctor, right? Their do regular doctors can't figure it out. They're trying to put them on some management protocol and yeah. um, telling them to live with it. Anyway, yeah. he has this incredible lab that he works with and they get to the root cause. And it is amazing. It is amazing because his transformation that he made in this past two years and then the education that he's gotten and pursued on his own, like he went yeah. through a functional medicine course. I mean, I know we're not talking about my husband, but I know, no, no, but like but we were, we are talking about the ripple effects from us being curious and asking why and going deeper, yes. right? Like, and, and thank you. it sounds like he's probably more lit up and on fire from him but you know, finding that yep. career that he probably would never have discovered otherwise. Yes. And now he's, yes. I can only imagine how exciting that is to be on the leading edge of serving people, helping people get to root causes because the, you know, from speaking to so many doctors and medical professionals in my life, and I'm sure you have as well, like so many of them are so worn out, they're tired, they're overworked, they're bored of like just patching people up and sending them off. They went into medicine to actually yeah. help, but a lot of the time they're not able to do that. Right. So I'm so excited. Your husband, that's amazing. Yeah. Very and cool. honestly, part of what inspired him was, it was when he saw me doing our coaching program that we were in together and yeah. seeing everybody tapping into their gifts and their passion and creating a business to serve and help people solve problems. And he mm -hmm. was like, well, after having seen what you've gone through and I see how you weren't served in Western medicine, he mm -hmm. decided to pursue that. So I'm really proud of him. <laughs> Yay. So and cool. But, and it was uh, his ability to admit that he wasn't being, he was not my number one supporter and, yeah. you know, apologizing for that and asking forgiveness. And, you know, we've done a lot of work with a marriage counselor for that, that we've had a lot of healing as a result. And again, mm. going deeper, asking why, uh, you know, asking yeah. questions and being willing to be humble. And that's how I think we've healed that relationship too, because Remember in Mallorca, I don't know if you remember, but I was struggling with our relationship then. And yeah. it was partly because he wasn't believing what was happening with me on a physical level with my health. Yeah. But it also must be, because I had that as well from my partner and he, he did believe me actually, but it, he was frustrated. I could see how frustrated he was because he just saw me breaking down and he's like, but, but I can't see anything yeah. wrong with you. And, exactly. and as the person who's not feeling great and, you know, is feeling like they're dying as, as I was at the time, yes. and I'm sure yes. you were many, 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 many times. 
um, to, to explain that to someone who can't see you bleeding or you know anything physically wrong to, to say I feel like I'm dying there's something wrong with my body it must be extremely frustrating for them who you know people who want to help but they're like I don't I can't help the doctors are saying you're fine or you know it's yeah. it's just depression just depression it's right. another conversation isn't it um, Actually, yeah <laughs> At least we're gonna to have to have our own show. <laughs> we'll call it we'll call it the daily rant or something. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> we're so we could go so deep. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um so then how so you went from Western medicine and having your gallbladder taken out and all of those things. What path did you then take for like more kind of alternate help? Well, I had I had pursued alternative health prior to the gallbladder situation, but they had, my doctor, had, my naturopath didn't um, know what the issue was either. And they recommended okay. the surgeon. And yeah. um, so I have since learned that I should have gone to a mold literate doctor or a Lyme literate doctor is what they call them. And yeah. um, these are doctors that have been trained in these root causes and these chronic illnesses that go missed in Western medicine. Mm. And uh, sadly, after I went, which was that summer, um, then I learned, you know, my doctor said, we could have saved your gallbladder, you know, through detoxing you and supporting your body. And, um, you know, that was very sad to me because now, of yeah. course, now I have to take these um, enzymes and I have to take ox bile which is gross to me, wow. um, at, with every single meal for the rest of my life, which is so frustrating. But like my yeah. husband says, is at least we have the technology today that you have some relief from that. So yeah. he's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah good but, mindset. Thank goodness yeah. we're, we're mindset coaches, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Switch yeah. anything around. At the end of the day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Um, what was your other question around that? <laughs> So, wait, and then, you know, because you've, you've not stopped, have you, from there? You've oh, continued. Sure, sure, sure. That's right. Researching. So, yes. So then I continued to research, and then I had started to have people reach out to me and say, I don't want to offend you, but have you looked into breast implant illness? And um, I was like, okay. Actually, it was my sister who had called me up one day and was like, I have a friend who got her implants removed, and she's so much better. And so I think you should look into that. So we went to three different plastic surgeons for their opinion. And of course, they all said, oh, no, implants can't make you sick. According to the FDA, these implant devices are safe, blah, blah, blah. And of course, when you're in a situation where you already have the implants and there could be other factors for why you're sick, uh, hearing that, I was like, okay, good. I can avoid a surgery, right? Um, no. <laughs> so so it, it was in April of last year. I, th I think I told you this. I started to tell you this. And I got distracted. Um, that the first time I discovered the parasites back to that, um, this all ties together. So it was April of 2019, like two months later after having the uh, gallbladder removal surgery, we were getting ready to go to Sedona, Arizona for a few weeks and uh, just be in the desert. Oh, one of my favorite places. I love it there. So ironically, um, uh -huh. I took a biofilm disruptor called biocidin, which is an herbal mix of all of these incredible herbs that break up biofilm. Biofilm is what pathogens hide behind and your body doesn't detect them and that's why it doesn't show up on blood tests. Okay, so I'm taking biocidin and thinking I have a candida overgrowth and I knew that I had this um, candida overgrowth because I've dealt with that for a, a, a long time. And um, you know, getting yeast infections or getting a mouth, mouth infections from the candida. And so I thought, this is it. I'm gonna get rid of the candida. I'm doing the candida cleanse. <laughs> And I'm going to take biocidin to take it to the next level. What well, was on day two of taking the biocidin that we're on our way to go to the airport. I stopped to go to the bathroom for bowel movement. Guess what? In the toilet, I see a 14 inch long worm. And that was oh my the God. first day that I know that I was like, what in the world? And I mean, then I know I started, this story. I know this story because we have you and I, I talked about this tonight. But I, and I saw, you know, your post. But it's still like, and then for you probably as well. You cannot hear it or, or know me. about it or think about it enough <laughs> times. And it's still gross. It's still like, what the actual is in my body? Yeah, right. So my doctor says to me, "Well, if you're seeing a 14-inch long worm, that means that it's been growing in your body for years." 
pictures. Wow. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, because they don't come out unless they are dying, right? And anyway, so then I go on to do stool test after stool test, and they are all negative, negative, negative for parasites. And of course, my husband at this point is going, whoa, you have really lost it. Like, there's something called um, parasitosis, delusional parasitosis. And this means, this, this is the medical term that they've created for people who think they have parasites. Well, guess what? It's very hard for these labs to actually detect parasites because when a parasite dies, it starts to excrete an enzyme that kills it, that disintegrates the body. And right. so they're very hard to detect on a uh -huh. test. Also, if you have parasites that don't live in your GI tract, you're not going to show them on a stool test, right? I'm no. not freaking out. I'm like, how many parasites are potentially in my body? Like, where are these little suckers, like, feasting? <laughs> well, that's the Don't tell me. I've become very knowledgeable on. We yeah, yeah. Parasites, well, uh, podcast. <laughs> um, but, but it was from there that I, I went on to learn that I had the um systemic parasite infection and like i told you i um i went on to learn extensively about parasites about treating mm -hmm. them about the misconception that we have here in the u.s and in the de developed world let's be honest that parasites don't exist in our countries because we're quote clean countries we're developed mm -hmm. countries Right. right. Well, that uh, you can believe that at your peril because it's most likely that you do have parasites because if you've never done a parasite cleanse, then there's no reason that you would have cleared them out. And we're right. exposed to them when we travel internationally. We're exposed to them when we eat foods that come from other countries. How often does yeah. that happen? We're exposed right. to them when we eat sushi, raw food, right? Raw fish. Um, well, I don't have those kind of parasites because I don't eat sushi, but... <laughs> You're lucky. I, I lived in Japan. I've eaten, I've eaten sushi almost weekly for like 20 years. So full on. <laughs> and if you have pets, you have a dog. Yeah, I have a dog. I mean, and actually, you know, when you first started going down this parasite journey, I was like, it doesn't make sense to me that we as humans wouldn't have parasites because we are treating our dogs and our animals every year for parasites. So how come they get them and we don't? We're living in the same environment, right? You got it. Yeah. <laughs> All of these so, things, right? Anyway, yeah, it's a very fascinating conversation and it used to freak me out. Literally when I, then when I did the big parasite cleanse in November of, you know, it had been six months of trying to clear them out and I wasn't getting anywhere. And finally I was like, screw this. I ordered yeah. medication from India. I had a friend send me another parasite medication vacation from Mexico <laughs> and I did a legit parasite cleanse and that's when I discovered it was systemic and I had the arms and legs situation and I call it my long dark night of the soul. I was sick for nine days clearing parasites. I didn't eat anything. I was like bawling my eyes out around the clock because it was so traumatic. It literally felt like I was possessed and it yeah. gave me a perspective on religious ceremonies and not just in christianity but in religious ceremonies throughout time and history the yeah. foods and herbs that they've chosen the fasting that they do it is all connected to clearing parasites i guarantee you right. so it's right. really interesting to learn about that makes sense and it's something that here in the developed world we just kind of are like it doesn't exist i don't have it right well, guess what if you yeah. have some random symptoms that aren't clearing up you just might <laughs> Wow. It, it, it all makes sense. It all makes sense, right? It's only in the developed world. If we still lived in tribal communities, we would be, you know, we'd be eating the right things and we'd be having these cleanses, like you say, and these ceremonies. That's they, they yeah. still do that in yeah. indigenous cultures. They do. Yeah. Crazy. That's when they most, most frequently happen. And pay attention to this. Most ceremonies in tribal culture and um and religious ceremonies throughout history have occurred on new and full moons. And that's when parasites return to the gut to reproduce, and that's when they're easiest to clear. So if you oh, wow. notice symptoms increasing over new and full moons, it's yeah. time to parasite cleanse. Well, a lot of people just put that down to the new and full moons, don't they? They say, oh, I, I get migraines around the full moon or whatever it is. And that would totally make sense. But we, yeah. we put it off to like woo things or, yeah. you know, it's, it's normal whatever oh at least we're gonna have about a million conversations i don't know if i'm gonna have any other guests on unmasked we're gonna just be like back to back <laughs> <laughs> um 
All right, let's share a code. We let's do a series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, you're going to have your own. You need to, you've got your own show coming out soon as well, haven't you? So I can't wait for that. Yeah. Let's yeah, fast forward a little bit. Detox, right? Well, of course it is. It's going to be amazing. And I, I'm literally like, you have to get it out immediately. Come on. Come on. We need <laughs> to you. hear this. Um, <laughs> I want to fast forward a little bit. Thank you so much for sharing all of your, your health journey, you know, to, to that point. It's taken you down an, an unexpected or many unexpected rabbit holes though, hasn't it? Yeah. And you mentioned, you mentioned that word scam, scamdemic earlier. What, where did you go from your health journey to, to this point? Well, um, initially when this coronavirus came out, I was in Hawaii with my kids and we were only going to be there for two weeks. Then they started to shut down the airports around the world and um, Hawaii decided to shut down as well to tourism. So we kind of got stuck there. <laughs> um, you, so you were in Hawaii for your health, right? You went there to, to yeah. be in the sunshine more and yep. to help your healing yep. journey. Okay, cool. Yep. And we were there with our friends who had just moved there. They homeschool their kids as well. And so we were looking to buy a farm, coffee farm. And anyway, as we're there, you know, I had had, okay, so in January of this year, I had the implants removed. And so this was the beginning of March. So it was only, I was only maybe uh, 10 weeks out from the surgery. And so, yes, I was in Hawaii to be in the sunshine, to swim in the ocean, to eat the fresh foods and to shop for some real estate. And um, as the world shut down, I talked to my doctor. My doctor said, well, if you can stay put, stay put because it'll be safer than traveling. We don't know what this is. Yeah. And um, you already have a compromised immune system. And he also didn't want me flying wearing a mask because it lowers your blood oxygen level. And somebody with mold and Lyme and co-infections, et cetera, they yeah. tend to have struggle with um, oxygenated blood anyway, because yeah. everything gets so out of whack. And so I agreed, okay, we'll stay. So we uh, rented my mom. Well, if you're going to stay in anywhere in the world, sorry to interrupt you, know, but right? <laughs> well, it was great. <laughs> I was like, I've never so, been to Hawaii and it's at the top of my list. And I, I was watching, I was seeing your journey and your photos in Hawaii. And I was like, I know she's recovering, but I mean, Hawaii, it's just the dream, isn't it? it was heavenly, <laughs> heavenly. Yeah. So we move, our friends move in with us because they had been camping as they were trying to buy a house. The this, this story oh. is so incredible. So now we're a, fa a family of 10 because it's me and my two kids and them and their five kids. Wow. And we have a, I think it's, it was a 4,500 square foot house with an ohana and a pool and hot tub and the most incredible view to the west of the ocean and the sunset at night. It was incredible. Amazing. And um, and it was incredible because for the first month, we were not leaving the house at all. It was, Hawaii was on complete lockdown. You couldn't go anywhere. And um, then they started to open up the beaches where you could go swim in the ocean, but you couldn't hang out on the beach. You could cross the water, cross to get to the water. Run quick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you weren't fast enough, they literally told you to go home. And that happened to me. It, as sounds, I was like a, it sounds like a game. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever play bulldog at school? Do you remember bulldog? Did you have that in the States? Yeah. Okay, so in, in the UK, in, in England, certainly, we would play bulldog where you all line up against the wall with your back. Uh, you're you're facing the wall and then there's one person who's the bulldog and the idea is when uh, they say go you've got to turn around and run to the other side of the playground oh, with, without the bulldog getting you <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah so that's how it was yeah we were trying to cross across um the you know lava and there were sea urchins the tide was out and so we were walking slowly because we were barefoot and the lifeguard comes on get in the water or go home and i yell <laughs> back we're trying not to step on the sea urchins and he's like you're taking forever get in the water and i was like dude we are walking this is considered exercise <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i'm like you need to chill and clearly he was bored um yeah anyway, it was just a great experience though because we were in the sunshine and uh, this was interesting too because i would some days i would wake up really feeling like crap and my my thing is when i'm really feeling overwhelmed with toxins i will i will wake up with a massive headache my upper right quadrant hurting really badly um no energy 
and just like really feeling sick, almost flu-like, you know? Yeah. And, and it would last usually until I did either a coffee enema, I would go swimming in the ocean, I would do an infrared sauna. You know, there, I have different things I do to detox my body um, and that would help, but it would usually take a couple hours. But I noticed when I was in Hawaii that the number of days in a row that I would have that feeling waking up were decreasing significantly. So mm, wow. pretty incredible. And yeah. there's something about swimming in the ocean, I'll tell you. I would wake, if I would wake up with that feeling and I would go straight to the water, swim within 40 minutes, it was like, I don't know what it is in the water. Well, Maybe it's the negative, it's, it's the negative ions, right? You're getting like natural negative, yeah. is it negative? It I think it's incredible. negative. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to my partner recently, because we're, we're in a beautiful part of the world, just outside of London. We're surrounded by a um, national park and we're right by the river, but we used to live down in Cornwall and uh, the um, southwest coast of the UK, which is like rugged, coastal cliff yeah. lines and and the ocean and surf we used to surf every day i'm like i miss that and i feel like the way the world is going right now we need to be yeah. in as remote a place as possible with as much yes. nature and ocean and sun as possible so yeah i might be uh, maybe we'll be moving to hawaii as well <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so it, it was a, a great few months in hawaii we ended up being there for four months but like it, we could not get a flight back we would we would as we came to the end in may um we would book a flight and the airlines would cancel it and that happened four different times before we got back here june 8th <laughs> it was pretty crazy. wow really crazy and yeah. so while you were there and while you've been recovering you've been constantly researching health and wellness mm -hmm. and and how to detox and that's you know with the the covid thing coming out at the same time it was the yeah. perfect opportunity i guess for you to to look at both simultaneously i said hang on and because you had no choice with a compromised immune system you had to look mm -hmm. at okay if this is a pandemic if this right. is something very serious i've got to consider how i'm gonna best avoid it mm -hmm. survive it whatever so what right. what um what was the first rabbit hole that you <laughs> you went down with that well did you know that a virus is not alive I did. Yeah, I do. I did. I do. I did and I do. I say that, that because just the yesterday yeah. I was reminded of this. I knew this early on and then they were pushing it so much and I kind of forgot. And then yesterday yeah. I was researching. I was like, yes, of course, it's not alive, but everyone thinks that it is and it can be passed easily from right. one being to the next, right? Right. And so carry on, sorry. Things like we have Kill the virus, right? <laughs> so a virus is literally just a little package of genetic code. And when it inserts into a cell, it starts to tell the cell to pr produce certain proteins. And okay. our human bodies, we've evolved with viruses. And viruses existed something like, I think, a billion or two billion years before human life existed, which was, I guess, around 200,000 years ago. And um, there's... Is there's so much interesting information about viruses and how they have evolved with us and then viruses and um, toxins in our, in our environment and how we've seen some massive spikes in, in, in virus epidemics due to certain things in our environment, such as glyphosate, which is Roundup. And and when that came on the scene, we saw a huge spike in HIV and AIDS. Um, they actually have done studies in blood, blanks, blood banks here in the US, and there was the existence of HIV virus in mm -hmm. blood in 1967, and as early as 1967. Wow. And then it was in the 70s that they started um, applying more chemicals to our food. And um, I don't know if you know, but they spray Roundup on crops to dry them out before mm -hmm. harvesting, before processing them. And so part of the issue is this Roundup or this chemical gets into our bodies and makes us more susceptible to not only heavy metals, which is a big problem mm -hmm. for a lot of people, people um, because it displaces your mineral content in your cells and replaces it with the heavy metals you're exposed to through the air we breathe the water we drink the exhaust you know from the airplanes the cars etc yeah. and it, it's just a whole toxic soup 
that we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of doctors and virologists are predicting that there will be more epidemics when it comes to these viruses. Um, there's a lot, also there are a lot of these level four labs throughout the US, through China and elsewhere that are playing with viruses science you know they're trying to splice them they're they're yep. doing things that are dangerous and i've lot, read and learned a lot about the lab where this virus was created and mm -hmm. it actually was in existence in their freezer for seven years before it turned into a pandemic so they say it came from a bat which it might have originally you know the part of that virus the genetic code was found in in a bat 3,000 miles from Wuhan, but yeah. then there's a certain technique called passage, which yeah. is where they take a virus and they keep replicating it and replacing it into a um, cell to make it evolve and become more virulent. And that's, I think, what we're seeing today. Well, because from so, what I understand as well, is that it couldn't possibly jump from one being to another. Like, can't jump from an animal to a human. It just doesn't have the, the right... Um, I don't know the scientific term, I'm sure you do, to, to attach to, to our cells, right? Um, right. So they have well, to prefer it. Well, that's, um, it, could, it could do that, but they say it can take over 800 years to do that. Right. So originally, this virus had jumped from the bats to the miners in the cave where it was discovered. Um, and that was the situation seven years ago. And they okay. had three, three miners die of this upper respiratory viral disease. And so they took the virus from these miners and they, that's how it got into the lab. That's how they started to work with it. That's how they started to passage it yeah. and um, evolve it rapidly. And then they also say, there's some theory out there that it was spliced with HIV. And um, if you follow Dr. Judy Mikovits, um, mm -hmm. you know, she does mention that a little bit. She's a virologist yeah. who's been outcasted because she's been outspoken in a whistleblower. So, well, this is <laughs> All right, go on. I was just gonna say, anytime that I see one of these media outlets or one of the social media platforms censoring doctors and scientists and virologists when they come out and speak out, um, then that is a person I will dig into. And I will dig into their background, I'll, I'll read their studies. And it's so interesting because the general population goes along and says, oh, they're quack, oh, they're crazy, oh, you know what I mean? Like, they're gonna, yeah. the general population thinks, oh, yeah, thanks, you know, for telling us the truth about that crazy person, uh, when in actuality, <laughs> if they were not speaking a modicum of truth, they wouldn't be censored. So, you know, right. look at uh, the deeper picture here, and also look at the funding of the studies you know, where I'm referencing the masks right now. Um, yeah. um, there was countless studies prior to this year that came out, even all the way up, I think the last um, study, independent study was January of 2020, um, around masks. And they said that cloth masks do not stop a virus. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, I don't know if you've seen, but there's a huge um, influx of new studies coming out saying how effective a mask is, a cloth mask is on a virus, you guys. Do you know the size of a virus particle? <laughs> I, I know it's insane to me. I mean, I'm <laughs> not nowhere near being a virologist or scientist or doctor, but to me, just intuitively, I'm like, this is not right. Like, isn't this just like high right. school science? Like, it's not right, isn't, you know? And what's breaking my heart right now, why I started this podcast is because it got to the point where it's en enough is enough. And, you know, right now, since last week it's mandatory to wear a mask in the UK or in yeah, England yeah. Mm -hmm. and that was it for me I was like enough now this is becoming tyrannical like to tell people what they can and can't do how they must take care of their bodies when there are those of us who are very well informed about how you know things like this work and what's frightening to me and I'm sure you as well um, and many people listening to this is where this is going. You know, I've had so many people mm -hmm. argue with me about the mask. So I'm like, look, it's not the mask per se. You know, for most people, we can wear a mask for a little while and be perfectly fine. But that again is for another deeper conversation. But it's where is this going? We right. acquiesce to the masks mm -hmm. and we know where this is leading. They have spoken about it very openly for many, many years. Depopulization, forced yep. vaccines, yep. cashless society, etc. Are people okay with that? 
is what I want to know. And I, I actually think they don't really comprehend. Yeah. They're not aware of this or open to this. What's yeah. your mission at the moment with this, with everything that you're sharing and digging into and researching? Because you've been, been very, very unapologetically vocal and been having some really great, important conversations. What's your greatest hope with the work that you're sharing and doing? Um, that more people will open their eyes to a hidden agenda, that more people will start to ask questions about when things are mandated, what is the science behind it and who are making, who's influencing these decisions? Where's yeah. the money coming from? Mm -hmm. Because there's, um, here in the US anyway, there's a lot of corruption and mm -hmm. people make money when they do the bidding of those who have a lot of money. <laughs> so, and, and, I, and I personally feel like we could help our, our, our situation here, our government, our legislation, if we did away with, or if we created term limits, you know, because we have career politicians that have been in, up at Washington for 50 plus years. They went in, you know, with a small net worth, and now they're worth multi-millions. I mean, come on, I don't, yeah. I don't know really frustrates what, what frustrates me is you don't have to do much digging to uncover the truth it's all blatantly out there to find you right know? but the the lack of willingness for people to go uh, you know to take a sidestep right. from mainstream media and to actually think critically for themselves is what is blowing my mind right now it's like dude yeah. you don't you don't have to go very far and actually my what's blowing my mind more than anything is the lack of common sense the the disconnect from our intuition because when we know like our our gut tells us our intuition knows that something's off but so many people are either not listening to that or are so far connected from that that's what's worrying to me it's like we that's this place that we've yeah. got to that we are literally yeah robots yeah where do you where do you think it's where do you think it's going to go from all of the research that you've been doing? Well, what, what I do you think agree with you that there is a deeper agenda at work here that they have, you know, the ID here in, here in uh, the U S it's called ID 2020. And it's going to, I believe connect people's medical records to their ID. And um, I think, I hope not, but I think what could happen, happen is if you're not fully vaccinated because I've heard this multiple times we have a childhood vaccination schedule and now we're moving into an adult vaccination schedule and yeah. if you all haven't watched the movie Vaxxed watch it this yeah. week put it on the calendar you can um, just look it up don't use Google switch to DuckDuckGo or to Brave search engine um, otherwise you'll be getting the curated version of the world um, anyway the I, I'm afraid that what they're going to try to do is connect our freedom to move and to purchase things and to receive services to whether or not we're vaccinated. And because right. we're already seeing them make that push here, you know, a couple of states here in the US have adopted mandatory vaccination schedules for children with no medical or religious exemption, which is insane to me because they're not taking into consideration these genetic defects. There are people that literally cannot handle the vaccinations. It's, it's insane. I also heard from a friend of mine in the US today that they've got 100,000 volunteers to, to sign up to, to mm -hmm. trial the vax already. It's nuts. It and that, nuts. those are people that are so scared of something that they don't understand. Um, I, I read a study, I shared it, it was from Dr. Mercola's website. And it was, he said, we could end this pandemic in 30 days if we went on a campaign to raise everyone's vitamin D levels. Vitamin right. D, you all, it is a, an, it comes in an oil form. You want to take the vitamin D3 with the K2. And if you have not been taking vitamin D, I would say take between 5,000 and 10,000 IU a day. You can go in and get a little oh, blood. Mine's not high enough. I need, I need five, mine's 3,000 with, uh. So that's not high enough, right? Well, are you how many how much are you taking per day? One spray? Yeah, do do two. You can okay. do a loading dose also uh, for two weeks. Um, but the thing is, so when and I was, I was getting so sick, like I was getting cold sores, every cold, I was getting a strep throat, like every two to three weeks before, um, you know, when I was sharing my illness story, illness journey, um, this winter, I started taking 
a vitamin D supplement. I had gotten my blood um, test done and I had a vitamin D level that was so low. It was 20 and wow. we're supposed to ideally have it up to 70, between 70 and 200. Now this is controversial in medicine because in um, the government in the UK and the US is going to tell you to take 400 to 600 IU per day. That's yeah. it's inadequate. It's inadequate. And yeah. um, the doctors in the know are going to tell you that you need to get that, um, that tested blood level up to 70 plus. And some even say to go as high as 200. So wow. just depending on um, your, your test results. And it's just a little pinprick, a little blood yeah. drop. Of blood. And there are labs that you can send in a blood spot and have it tested that way. Um, but that is one of the things that I think it made a huge difference for my health and wellness. Um, I have yeah. another friend, he is Hawaiian and he was, uh, we were talking about this the other day. He said he had started taking his vitamin D and it totally changed the way he felt every day. He had more energy. He slept better. He had fewer headaches and, um, it's pretty, it's a pretty incredible supplement to take. It's actually a hormone. So you, you definitely want to learn about vitamin D and start taking yeah, it. I well, while you're while you're talking, I'm just going to save my um, puppy from destroying her. This always happens on a recording, Elise. It's okay. <laughs> He's so naughty. Hang on. I say save my puppy. Okay. What I actually mean is his bed. I cannot tell you. We're going to oh, leave this funny. in the recording because this is real life, guys. <laughs> the amount yeah, of beds that I've bought our dog and he anything that's like soft like this he just loves ripping to pieces oh. I've, had the, I've had this one a week and look he's decided he wants to get my attention and he's just ripping it <laughs> yeah. we've lost a couple of sofas that way yeah he does <laughs> um, so, what, so vitamin D anything yep. else kind of natural supplement wise that you'd be like because there are some things that oh, we can might. do that aren't being spoken about that we can There's... really boost yeah there's actually, there's um, a lot of, the thing about that I'm so frustrated with our media on is that they are literally like scaring you. First of all, yeah. they were talking about the deaths. Now they're talking about the cases. Well, guess what? You're having 70,000 cases, but almost 70,000 people are getting better. Um, right. The problem here is that we have people that are on statins and ACE inhibitors, and that's going to be a problem because um, the the virus binds with the ACE2 receptors. And so there are just so many issues about our approach right now. And if we could revamp it, you, we could have a lot less death. And even right. though our death numbers are dropping quickly, they actually, a lot of people are saying, we're not even going to have enough people sick to warrant a vaccine, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, we created this virus so that we could create a vaccine so that they could make billions and trillions of dollars as we vaccinate the entire world. Because really, if you look at the big picture, that's what it looks like is happening. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, they're not talking to you, though, about the things that you can do to boost your immune system. The first thing you can do is get the vitamin D up. The second thing you can do, easy things are, are increase your vitamin A. The vitamin A is a, an oil that you literally take one drop of per day. Also, where do you get, where is there a specific one that you recommend? Um, I love Seeking Health. And this seeking, was, and would you go there for all of your kind of, um, for the vitamin D, vitamin no. A? Okay. No, my, well, so as I was sharing with, with you, my husband created his online practice. He now has a online pharmacy called Full Script, oh, and cool. they represent um, over 15,000 products that uh, health pr practitioners, functional medicine doctors use um, with their patients for natural um, solutions. And uh, one of the brands that they carry is called Seeking Health, and it was developed by Dr. Ben Lynch who wrote a book called Dirty Genes, which I highly recommend because he talks about how our genetic defects can be triggered by environmental exposures and then how you can actually heal these gen genetic defects or these SNPs. And um, he also developed a um, supplement line for people who have M MTHFR defect or other situations, um, but his vitamin D and vitamin A supplement are incredible. Um, if you're... The other thing to look at as you're wanting to improve your immune system is glutathione. Are you taking glutathione? No. Um, you want it to I, I don't even know what that is. 
<laughs> it's that terrible. I'm like, what is that? What is <laughs> Alicia, you're going to be like my walking um, medical journal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, glutathione is actually produced by the body and the liver. And um, when we are faced with environmental toxins, we're depleted. If you ever take Tylenol, you, you flatline your glutathione. So people that are vaccinating babies and kids and the kid gets a side effect like a fever or a headache or doesn't feel well and then the parent gives them Tylenol flatlines the glutathione. They're wow. saying that that can lead to the SIDS death, you know, the crib death. Um, wow. Okay. Babies. Okay, so it's that's like that's that is huge. Huge. why that, why are these things not being spoken? I mean, we know why, but it's just <laughs> very very simple things that can save so many lives if people so just get educated on this this simple stuff. No, and the heartbreaking thing is that people don't really get into this stuff until they've been injured themselves or their child right. has been from right. vaccines or from antibiotics or like there's just such a cascade of stuff, right? Anyway. Yeah. Um, so back to the things that I would take to improve the immune system, the vitamin D, the vitamin A, the vitamin C. Yeah. Um, there's some I've been necking that, that like, <laughs> I've been necking yeah. that since the beginning of this, like up yeah. everything. Yes. And there's something I've been sharing on my Instagram. I talk about the vitamin C flush, where if you, you are feel, starting to feel under the weather or super exhausted, you can do a vitamin C flush where you take um, the buffered vitamin C, um, you take it every 15 minutes, a gram every 15 minutes until you reach bowel intolerance, basically diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> you, you go to the bathroom and then you go, you look at the total amount that you took and you cut that down to 75%. And that's the amount you'll take the next day. If you have bowel intolerance again, again, 75% of that number. The first time I did this, so because I was chronically ill, guess how many grams I took in, in two hours? I can't even imagine. Believe it. How many? 55 grams. 55? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because what it does is your, your, your GI tract is like, oh my gosh, this antioxidant, we're so in need of it. We're so deficient. Because if, you're, yeah. if you have chronic inflammation from fighting chronic illness, then your body becomes so deficient in these anti-inflammatories. And so um, it grabs onto that vitamin C and it utilizes it and then it starts to push out toxins and that's where the bowel intolerance comes from it's it's, it's and an that's all that happens because so you can't overdose on vitamin c right it, you're just yeah. gonna have uh, you're just gonna get rid of it yeah. so, cheap. Wow. so cheap then i would do um quercetin or quercetin some people will say this is a, a natural compound found in onion and quercetin um with zinc Okay, you want to take the zinc because zinc is uh, helpful to the body and to the cells to fight viruses. Yeah. And the um, quercetin or quercetin pushes the zinc into the cell. It's like the bridge. So, and also, you know how they talk about hydroxychloroquine? Yeah. That, if you can get a prescription for that and, because, and you are finding you're, you're ill, if you take that with the zinc, it again is a driver for the zinc into the cells. That's wow. the behind that. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Thank you. You really are a walking medical journal. And so remind us of your, your husband's um, pharmacy site. Oh, it's called full script and you would have Fullscript. to have a, um, an account set up with him for that. And then he can okay. actually make recommendations to people for the supplements that they might need to fill in these, these gaps because I like our, um, my, my network marketing company is supplements and it's incredible premium quality supplements like your vitamins, your minerals, your probiotics. But for somebody that needs more support, they might need to get more specialized. So, okay. that, that, so we'll, we'll make sure all the links are in the show notes. So the, your network <laughs> marketing company for full script, we're gonna, we've got a, a ton of show notes for you guys. So make sure you check those out for all of the, the links and everything that Elise has mentioned. How do you want to wrap this up? If you okay, let's put it this way: if there was only one thing you could tell the world right now, what would that be? Question everything. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> Question everything. And then, second, trust your intuition. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Yeah. And there's probably something else going on behind the scenes that you may not be aware of, but mm -hmm. you've got to do the digging because the media. And social media, they're not going to give it to you. It's censored, it's bought, it's paid for, and, 
and they have an agenda and it's not, it does not have your health as the highest priority. Only you do. You are your own best doctor. So mm -hmm. in the future, I, I encourage everybody to be educated on the way the body works, the methylation pathways, the way we detox, you know, because really those who are going to survive this toxic future are going to be those who learn how to detox their life. Nice. Thank you so much. So question everything, trust your intuition. You are your own best doctor. Gold, Elise. Gold. Thank you so much. <laughs> We, well, I mean, there's, I could talk to you all day long. There's, there's, so much still, there's still so much that we need to personally catch up on. There's, I just want to pick your brains all day because you, you really are, you know, so you're just so incredible in so many ways. So we will have, let, if you're up for it, I'd love to have you on for a part two. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it. This is going to be like a, a David Icke London real sit. You're going to be oh, like on good. here every <laughs> And it's Elise, it's back. Maybe. We're gonna like... <laughs> right? And I was going to say, maybe if you have a, um, like a questionnaire form or something where people could ask their question and for yeah. us to do for our next, um, uh, our next interview. Something yeah, like sure. We'll definitely do that. <laughs> for those of you listening, thank you so much or for joining. Or where they want to dive deeper. Yeah, exactly. So we will actually ask you if you're listening to this right now, please do like and share this out if you've enjoyed this episode with your communities. Make sure to hit subscribe and please leave us a comment. Let us know where you would like at least to go deeper for future episodes. We will for sure be having more conversations and we, we've just really scratched the surface with all of this. We're like, ah, oh, where can we, we need to go deeper with all of these pieces. Um, actually, one thing I would love you to um, leave us on beyond what you've already left us with beautifully um if somebody has just come across this conversation and they're mm -hmm. like what are they talking about maybe they're, they're maybe maybe they've heard some of this before but it's really you know just um they're just kind of waking up to this or just starting to question where should mm -hmm. they go next if they want to kind of research more about some of the things that you've spoken about if they're questioning you know the scandemic well one one of my favorite sources is called the X22 Report, and David is the host of this video. And what he does is he takes, we didn't even talk about Q. Um, I know. He, take, <laughs> he takes the Q drops, which is the intel from the inner circle um, at the White House in, in the U.S. here. And he, they, he takes the information. And he cross-references it with the, um, you know, the new executive orders or the, the, the court cases or, you know, whatever it is that's happening in yeah. the geopolitical space. And he puts it all together and um, ties it all in and explains it. And to be honest, um, I felt a lot, uh, I had lost a lot of hope in what was coming for our country and our future here. Yeah. Um, but when I listen to that X-22 report and I'm following Q and I'm looking at uh, what's happening in our geopolitical and our financial space. I'm like, we're on the right, right track here. And this is a pandemic and people are waking up by the millions. Like this isn't a conspiracy theory and the media keeps throwing it out there that it is because again, I don't even think that's a derogatory term, right? Someone I don't either. I think it's great. <laughs> Someone called me a conspiracy theorist on my, one of my posts the other day and I was like, thank you. I mean, yeah, I'm glad you put it. <laughs> That bands me in with a lot of very intelligent, awake, uh, connected people. So that's not an insult, believe me. Not an insult. <laughs> I know. I know. In in on that note, we didn't even talk about five D yet. I know. I know. Seriously, five <laughs> D, five G, all of the five. Like, <laughs> right. we're we're definitely gonna have another. Let's um let's actually schedule some time in for another conversation soon because yeah. there's so so many places we can go with this. I'm so honoured that you are the first guest on unmasked this is we're going to get this out far and wide um it's time yes. it's time to have these conversations so thank you for being so open honest generous and um i can't wait for more thanks elise you're an yes, absolute star my pleasure. Yay. <laughs> love you so much bye big love okay bye-bye <laughs>